Authors Ridge in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery here in Concord. To Authors Ridge. Quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Early on the morning of April 19th, 1775, the countryside was alive with the news of a British redcoat force about. Here's the North Bridge. It's where the first shots of the Revolutionary War happened, 1775. On the morning of April 19th, 1775, while the British held the bridge, the Minutemen and militia of Concord and neighboring towns gathered on the hill across the river. Concord River. Waldo Emerson lived here, as did Nathaniel Hawthorne. The fun just doesn't stop. I'm gonna go into the Concord Museum now. I've actually never been in here. So, let's check it out.
just the heart of the pilgrimage right here. This is where Little Women was written? Yes. Louisa was so fortunate to have this desk. It doesn't look like much, but you have to remember that in that time, women were not supposed to be serious writers. Here in her bedroom, surrounded by art made by her sister May, Louisa wrote Little Women in three months on the desk her father built. It wasn't only... She unlatches the door of one house, and all find it is their own house which they enter, a contemporary once said of Louisa May Alcott. Generations of readers around the world have come to know this house as home. The beloved saga of Little Women follows the four March sisters as they grow up in a very unique family in Civil War New England. It is here, in Orchard House, that the story was set, and it was here that the classic was written. In September 1857, Bronson Olcott, educator and leader of the American Transcendentalist Movement, purchased an 18th century home on the historic Lexington Road in Concord. It was an important move for the Olcott family, who had moved often as Bronson followed his dreams of educational reform. They would remain at Orchard House for 20 years. It was Bronson's second daughter, Louisa May, who would become the most famous and successful member of this talented and intellectual family. A multifaceted woman, she authored works for both adults and children in varied and often experimental style. And now, join us as we step back in time to meet Louisa May Alcott and hear her story. So what we found when we purchased the Orchard House, when Father purchased it in 1857, was, as one of Mother's friends put it, a house fit for pigs and 12 acres of apple orchard. Father spent a year restoring the property. Mr. Thoreau helped him as well, did a survey of the land for us, and it was an, a very large undertaking. Father put such love and care. He wanted to restore our orchard house home to what it had been years prior. You know, Minuteman had lived in our home many, many years ago. So it has a, a grand history and Father has an appreciation for such things. Orchard House has been an amazing place for me. Of course, I did write Little Women here and I did set the book as if we had always lived in Orchard House because, well, it would be very difficult to include all of those moves in one book. And since I had those rooms surrounding me as I wrote, I decided those would be the best to use for my book. Well, I did base my book Little Women very much upon my own family. And my mother was really called Marmy, as I say in Little Women. My older sister Anna couldn't say mother very well when she was very young, and it came out Marmar which eventually got translated to Marmy. And there are the four girls in real life, just as in the book. Anna is Meg, I am Joe, Beth is Beth, and May is Amy. But there are also a number of differences between Louisa's life and her most famous story. To begin with, Little Women is set at Christmas time during the War of Rebellion, but the girls are younger than we were in our real lives, and it is Father who is off at war because this is more traditional, more acceptable. I, in reality, was the one who went off to war in my family, not my father. My father was older and had no military experience. It would not have been appropriate or possible for him to serve, even though he felt very strongly about abolition. But I went off to war as a nurse in reality, so there's a difference. There is another important difference between the fictional Joe and the real life Louisa. I am a literary spinster, happy to paddle my own canoe, and uh, love freedom rather than a husband. However, Josephine, according to my publisher, and my little fans, had to marry. I would not marry Josephine off to Laurie to please anyone. 
even though all the letters poured in after I wrote part one, you may not realize I wrote Little Women in two parts. Part one, and then, because of its popularity, I was asked to write a sequel. But when the mail came in, in between part one and part two, all the little girls wanted to know what became of the little women. Did they marry? As if that's the end and be all of a woman's life. And I simply refused to have Josephine marry Laurie. My publisher insisted that she must marry, as did the girls. So finally, I struck a compromise. I would create a funny match for my Josephine. And I created Professor Bear. And he's a little bit older, a little bit stout with that accent, and all my father's educational ideas. So I had a bit of the last laugh and uh, made a few changes in that way, but still kept the spirit of the family very much alive. Within the rooms of Orchard House, the spirit of the Alcott family is also still very much alive. The parlor, with its window seats, arched fireplace, and decorative niches, was the site of legendary Alcott hospitality, filled with songs and dances, storytelling and dramatics. In this parlor, Louisa's oldest sister, Anna, married John Bridge Pratt of Concord in 1860. My older sister, indeed, did marry a wonderful man named John, just as Meg marries a wonderful man named John. And Meg's wedding is very much my real sister Anna's wedding in, in almost every aspect, even down to the fact that she didn't want to look fixed up or fancy that day, but wanted to be very much herself in, in a simple dress. That was very true to my sister Anna's character. Mealtime was filled with sharing and discussion in the Alcott family. Bronson believed that the key to social reform and spiritual growth lay in these everyday rituals of family life. The melodeon under the stairway is a gentle reminder of Elizabeth Alcott, Beth in Little Women. The death in 1858 of her kind and musical sister, her angel in the house, devastated Louisa. She died ten years before I wrote Little Women. So I had all those memories, but felt ready to be able to put them down on paper. Um, the way Beth's life went, her shyness and sweetness and, and the way she died are all very, very true. That's exactly as it happened. Bronson and Abigail May Alcott were a tremendous influence in their children's lives, instilling in them a sense of duty, self-reliance, and charity. Wise and practical Abba was a mainstay to her idealistic, visionary husband and an inspiration to her girls. The master bedroom reflects her taste and holds many of her possessions. Mother understood I needed to be alone and I needed to write. Father, on the other hand, was very influential in my education and in encouraging me to do things that other families might not allow a girl to do. He built me a desk at a time when it was improper, in the eyes of many, for a woman to have a desk of her own. My father had us all keeping journals, and when I was only eight years old, I wrote a poem that pleased Mother so much, she said, why, Louisa, you will be another Shakespeare. <laughs> Mother was sometimes given to exaggeration, but nevertheless, it was encouraging to me, and I did find that I could write stirring scripts for our theatricals. My sisters and our friends liked them very much, so I began to feel at an early age that perhaps I could do something with my writing. A room of her own was always of great importance to Louisa. She needed a place to escape from the burdens of everyday life, a place to write. Compelled to publish to help relieve her family's poverty, she began her literary career with poetry and short stories in popular magazines. She wrote hospital sketches in 1863, basing it upon her experiences as a nurse in the Civil War. Little Women, written in this room from May to July of 1868, also drew on Louisa's life experiences, creating a new kind of children's heroine, a living, breathing individual. It was an immediate success. But Louisa was not the only gifted member of the Alcott family. Her younger sister May, the blue-eyed golden girl with the love of beauty and elegance, was also a talented artist. Preserved on the walls and doors of her room are many delicate pencil and ink drawings of Madonnas, goddesses, and angels. Louisa's success with Little Women made it possible for May to study art in London, Paris, and Rome. I'll be perfectly 
um, fair to my sister May, I will say May has grown up a good deal since Little Women was written and uh, I think really has matured in many ways and her art has gotten much more developed and uh, so perhaps I, I would have to honestly say that um, even though Amy is May, she's improved a good deal. While in London, May met and married a young Swiss businessman and musician named Ernest Nierecker and they settled in Paris. May died six weeks after her daughter Louisa May was born in 1879 and the child, nicknamed Lulu, was sent to Louisa in Concord to raise as her own. If in Emerson's study, Perpetual Twilight Reigns, wrote a visitor to Orchard House in 1874, in Alcott's it is always noon. In his lifelong quest to improve the moral, intellectual, and spiritual culture of mankind, Bronson Alcott drew around him many of the leading social and literary figures of his time. Among them, his conquered neighbors, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. Father would, first of all, probably draw your attention to nature. He and his um, friends, who are transcendentalists, would say, if you go up through nature to God, you will then find what you are looking for. You can find that guidance in nature and within your own spirit. You have your own direction already. Uh, I like to point out to people who are of a more prosaic nature perhaps that you can see evidence of this in such simple things as the drawings on our walls, May's drawings, because someone else might say, well, that's just not proper. You shouldn't allow that. But my father and mother would say this is right for her. It was through the friendship of men like Emerson and Thoreau that Louisa and her sisters received much of their education. Mr. Emerson, I, I can hardly say enough about. There are some people, when they walk into a room, you know the world is a better place because they exist in it. Mr. Emerson was that sort of person for me. He walked into the room and I immediately felt his goodness, his kindliness just coming through his eyes and of course the way he writes. Such fine thoughts, they inspired me, truly. Now Mr. Thoreau was another sort of friend altogether. He knew nature in a way no one else that I've ever known has known nature. He could show you anything, explain anything. Animals would come and eat out of his hand. He was a truly remarkable. And one time, he pointed to something down on the ground and, and he said, look, Louisa, look here. And I looked and I saw nothing. And he said, look closer. So I looked, and I still, I said, I see a cobweb, nothing. And he said, Louisa, that is not a cobweb. That is the handkerchief of a fairy. And of course, it opened up another way of looking and thinking. In 1880, Bronson Alcott designed Hillside Chapel on the grounds of Orchard House for his new Concord School of Philosophy. It was the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. Unique among the transcendentalists, Alcott embodied and lived out his philosophical ideas, particularly those of educational reform. His passion and his ideals helped to shape the spirit of his own day. And many of his child-centered educational ideas, once considered radical, have helped to shape the spirit of education in our own times. I would say to young women who wish to write, first of all, read the best books and they will improve your style. Get plenty of physical activity into your life. It will improve your nerves, keep you strong and steady. Do not write for 14 hours at a stretch as I have. Uh, even housework is a good thing to keep your brain active. You can simmer stories while you cook and scrub and iron. I would also say do not write with steel pens. They will render your thumb quite useless, as mine now is. Instead, use cork pen holders or a gold pen, much easier on the, uh, on the thumb. And I would also say keep a journal, because I think you never know what life experience you may have to help you along in writing a story, perhaps that for you will be as successful as Little Women has been for me. Louisa May Alcott's classic story, inspired by her own unique family, lives on today in countless theater performances and movies. 
and in Orchard House, where the vision of family life evoked by Louisa in the pages of her book still invitingly linger.